Luxury and property are slowly becoming synonymous because of the beautiful suburbs and, of course, luxurious homes that South Africa has to offer. We are chatting about all of that today right here on the Private Property Podcast. My name is Timmy. Welcome. So our guest today is a highly sought after speaker as well as a real estate enthusiast. He, he hosts the Private Property Home Shoppers Show. He's dedicated to showing, showcasing extraordinary properties and developments in, engage, in an engaging and uh, interactive manner. The show features walkthroughs, some of the beautiful and most spectacular properties South Africa has to offer. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a podcast welcome to Chad Viveros. Chad, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. To me, thank you very much for having thank me. I it's an absolute it. pleasure. At least, you know, tonight you're not walking us through a beautiful house. You know, you're walking us up through our beautiful sets tonight. It is different. And it is, <laughs> it is just as fancy as I'd say some of the homes are. I really do like it. And it's a... Uh it's a really good welcome that you gave me there. I think I need to take you with me to some of these shows. I could get used to an intro like this. Sure, right? So um, talk us through, you know, talking about um, going with you to these beautiful homes. A lot of our viewers at home go with you to these beautiful homes in beautiful suburbs in South Africa. Talk to us about how, how you got into the property industry and how this is such a, love, uh, a passion and, and you love this so much. I mean, it was a long road. So I started off in investment property, offshore investment property about five years ago. And um, that was a journey. Then me and private property started speaking and I joined in um, a position where I helped business development, specifically within real estate. And that was five years of a lot of learning, five years of a lot of mistakes, um, five years of a lot of interesting conversations that we have as we've seen Essentially, the, the market rise, the market fall, and then the market rise all the way over again with, uh, with 2021 and COVID. So it was all of that. And then beginning of this month, really, I've started my new role in private property, which is the head of PropTech. And that is, again, I can only believe another long, arduous, but exceptionally interesting journey. Sure. And talk to us about that, because that was my next question, you know, diving into what you now do at PropTech and um, it being aligned, of course, with private property. What, what exactly do you do there and how does a day in your life look like? So PropTech, for anybody who doesn't know, is very, very similar to FinTech. And I think a lot of people have heard the word FinTech. So we're using mm -hmm. IT resources and IT solutions to help people buy, rent, manage, find, research property easier. So we're trying to look at problems that have existed in the industry for a long time, mm -hmm. repurpose them, repackage them, mm -hmm. and make them that much easier to solve, either for the consumer, which is people that come on every day to try and buy a new property, sure. or for our clients, which are people in real estate, you know, mm -hmm. developers and that. But a day in my life starts off with a lot of meetings because so many people need to be involved. You've got to have your IT teams involved. You've got to have your, your business analysts involved. So it's a lot of meetings. It's a lot of trying to distill what product are we trying to sell sure. and what product are we trying to offer to clients and how does it benefit them? What pain points are there and how can we solve them? And how can we solve them in ways that haven't been looked at before? So I think I'm very, very privileged to have teams that are so committed not only to our, our everyday guys that jump on the podcast that browse our site, but also to our clients. Yeah. Because without them, this position wouldn't exist. I wouldn't be where I am today. It's, it's a whole bunch of people that are far, far smarter than I am <laughs> that I get to lean on and really get to trust. And I, I enjoy that. Sure. And, you know, I'll, I'll speak about the other hat that you wear in terms of hosting the, the homeowners um, show. And how, how does that look for you in terms of how do you, number one, find these amazing properties? Because they look absolutely amazing. And, you know, the way it's documented, how how does that process go for you? And how, how do you guys w walk um, an, an, an individual that's watching, you know, through those homes and make sure that you highlight those beautiful aspects of the home? That's an interesting question. <laughs> so um, how we find them is it's the website. Jump sure. on the website search different pricing criteria and take a look and the first thing that you notice is South Africa has got some incredible homes sure, definitely. it's homes that you wouldn't believe I mean we went down to Cape Town and we were looking at homes in excess of 200 million rand and I was mm. like I didn't know homes like that existed <laughs> in South Africa and then you stop and you take a step back and you're like I think I've got to work a little bit harder <laughs> in life sure. but um, yeah the team here really does go research they, they speak to the different estate agents because we'd love to help out the estate agents so the home shopper show go out there, find those homes. And talking about what, what's fancy about them, I think was a learning experience for me. Because the first thing you do is you walk into the home yeah. and you look around and you highlight all the incredible features. Oh, it's got a jacuzzi, it's got a room flow pool, you know, you've got these incredible oh, views. Nice. And then you start finding out what makes an exceptional home is not just 
its price point or those stellar features. There's yeah. almost an intangible quality of some homes that sure. comes out the moment you walk into them. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, this feels like a home and not just a fancy a house. Fancy house yes. um, and those are really the ones that I think I can wax lyrical on all the time mm. and really enjoy it. And then you get some that just blow you away from the point of view that it's it's like you've walked into a museum. It's like you've walked into an art piece or an art project. Yeah. And there you can talk about it a lot, but what I came to realize is also there are some homes that you don't want to live in, you might want to own. Sure. But then there are some homes that you can imagine living in, settling down in, you know, staying there for 20, 30 years, raising a family, and those are really the incredible homes. And, and that's what you want to do with a family, essentially, or with a home, essentially. You want to raise a family. Mm. And it needs to be homey, you know, and, and hospitable so that when you have guests, and even you um, yourself can enjoy it who's the owner. So let's talk a little bit more about your favorite ones because you spoke a little bit about um, the beautiful ones you've seen. Tell me about your favorite ones. Which house did you walk into and you say, I could live here? This actually has my name written on it. Have you, have you spotted that house yet? There's been, there's been one home okay. in Bedford View that we did. I can't remember the episode number, but it was absolutely incredible. And I walked into it and you could see straight through the home. Yeah. And right at the back, there was this massive pool there, really beautiful. Sure. And they had like and I'm going to do it a gross injustice trying to explain <laughs> it now, so please don't, don't let me look, um, make it not sound that great. But yeah. it had like this rusted artwork, and it was supposed to be rusted, on the wall behind the pool. But mm. then it had all this greenery flowing out mm. from the rusted artwork. And the contrast in colors with the pool was amazing. Mm. The way the home was laid out was incredible. And um, that was probably my favorite. But because I've done so many, I don't think I've got a singular favorite. I've got favorite features in each. Okay. Um, like there's some homes that have got incredible bathrooms, yeah. insanely cozy, luxurious bathrooms, yeah. baths that rise up from the center of the, of the bathroom that you can just imagine sitting down in relaxing bubbles. And then you've got this view on some of them yeah. across the whole estate. And you just think, how are you going to pull yourself out of this and go to the office? How did sure. these people get this wealthy when you've got a bathtub like that? And then they've got the pools and the jacuzzis and the bedrooms and the fireplaces. So there are some, there, there is in each home something that I'll say is absolutely incredible. Absolutely, yeah. But my standout home will always be that one in Bedford View. And unfortunately, I think straight after we did the video, somebody put an offer in on it. Sure. But it was, in, and it also it wasn't that expensive. Um, mm. So that's the nice thing about the Home Shopper Show is it's not, only exceptionally expensive homes. That is the majority and that's what we think makes the best viewing pleasure. Yes. But we really do like to switch it up and we might talk about some of the coolest investment property. Mm. Um, you know, really cool development. That's, you know, 900,000 rand. But they've done stuff in that development that you don't see other developers doing. And that's why we think it'll be interesting for the guys who, who watch it. So it's not only the 200 million rand houses, but um, oh, that house, <laughs> you know, so oh, close. Yeah. I'll make sure that you catch up with that homeowner, uh, the Home Shopper Show, to make sure that you can get all of this luxurious thing and you know you see it and you maybe even start seeing how you can start channeling your investment. So let's talk a little bit more about the luxury home spaces in, uh, in South Africa and the market. How, where do you see it going? And do you, uh, as compared to the other markets in the world, uh, where do you think we currently are? So, um, look, I'm far from an expert in this, sure, but yeah. um, I think what I can say that holds true is we saw quite a big growth in 2021. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the interest rates were so low, everybody wanted to buy them. But what compounded that and affected the luxury space is that people started working from home and it became the norm. Now, yeah. to hear somebody say, I work from home, it's not a, sheesh, you're really lucky. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Um, and not only that, it's that, you know, there needed to be an office for, for you know, you, and then there's yeah. an office for, say, your wife or your husband. Mm -hmm. Then there's an office or a study for your daughter, your children, and each of them. And then everybody wants their own bathroom so you don't have your children you know, throwing things at each other in the morning. So people started looking at bigger homes and expanding it and looking at it as an investment because now it's not just your home, it's also your office space. Yes. And it could also possibly be your classroom. Mm. And that's where we saw the luxury, you know, the luxury market grow. But that being said, in terms of selling luxury homes, it's not a, a case of these are going to sell once a day. Yeah. Um, I mean, and most of the real estate agents that specialize in luxury property sales know that. Mm -hmm. And they also know that the marketing that you need to throw into a luxury home is not the same kind of yes. marketing you need to throw into a four million rand home. And I, mm -hmm. and I say four million rand like it's not an expensive property. <laughs> and it, and it is an expensive it is. property. Mm -hmm. But if you're selling a home for 100 million rand mm -hmm. or, or 50 million rand, the kind of marketing you need to do needs to be special. It needs yes. to showcase this home because the people buying it are also not going to be the people who have got the time to go and take a walk through them. Not, some people do, but some people might want to just see it online. Some people might have their PA searching for it or somebody in their office searching for it. So the more you can showcase online, the better it's going to be for you and the quicker that home's going to sell. Sure. 
Well, thank you so much for that. And um, I feel the passion coming through, and that's because probably you're also a speaker. So take us through some of the topics that you're passionate about and that you talk about, you know, in, in your speaking um, um, ventures. It's definitely been an adventure. I think I've been bullied into <laughs> speaking more than I possibly went into it willingly. But um, I'd say I've moved more into property personality than I would say speaker. Okay. Um, we started off, or the Home Shopper Show specifically, yeah. started off as a talk about developments in South Africa and investments within developments. Yeah. And that was during COVID, so we thought we'd throw out some, some entertaining facts out there and also you could possibly capitalize on the interest rates. And I started off with that. Um, I then moved off into, into the Home Shopper Show, mm. into this, into specific investment talks. Um, and I mean, you'll catch me on Facebook pretty much every Monday and Friday, yeah. 8 p.m. for the Home Shopper Show. There's an advert coming out now that we're just looking at that mm. I'm going to be in. So I think that's how it's been. But it's been a blessing because I think being able to put yourself in situations where you feel uncomfortable mm. and you've got to express yourself and express yourself fluidly and coherently sure. under pressure pays off immediately so for anybody like looking to get into speaking for anybody who feels like they could improve put yourself in uncomfortable situations because being able to express yourself is one of the biggest blessings i've had and it's a blessing that luckily enough private property has given me yeah and you know as investors are watching tonight or someone who wants to even get into the investment space you know they're thinking um, what should i do what what is my first step if maybe i want to start channeling uh, my attention or even my energies and resources into getting a luxurious property what are some of the things they should do to in, in order to prepare themselves into getting into that space i'm going to sound like i'm selling going onto the private property portal now <laughs> but i'd probably say is jump onto your property portal jump yeah. onto private property the reason being is because we saw that huge dip in the interest rate in 2021, mm. um, but now it's coming up. Sure. You know, the interest rate has been hiked twice. Yeah. So you're slowly, the window of buying property at the lowest possible rate is slowly closing. Yeah. So jump in on it and jump in on it whether you want to buy luxury property or just normal property. It is one of the best investments you can find in South Africa and it's investments that pay off. So if you're going to do it, start looking at it now. That is the best bit of advice I think I could ever give. Before I let you go, I'm just going to ask you a quick question around uh, people who already have properties. Is it possible for somebody to turn an already existing property into a luxurious property, would you think? Absolutely. We did a showcase with, uh, I might be giving free marketing here, <laughs> with Builders Warehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, that was incredible. So what we did is we went out into different suburbs and we sourced a home and we purchased it. Yeah. We then partnered with Builders Warehouse to renovate it and we mm -hmm. documented the steps of how you can renovate a home. Yeah. Um, so you can 100% take a property you've got and invest some time into it and turn it into a investment or luxury property. However, I'd say watch that and do a bit of research because there are certain renovations that you can do that might sound great, but don't yield results in the long term. So do a bit of uh, research, jump into it and turn your property into luxury property. Sure. Absolutely. And it's very possible you might not want to move after you turn <laughs> it into luxury property. Well, Chad, thank you so much for joining us for tonight's episode. Any last words before I let you go? No, that's it. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure doing it. I think it's the first time I've done one live. So it's <laughs> nice to jump on here and uh, speak to everybody on the podcast for once. And you've been doing a fantastic job. I mean, I've watched you a couple of times. Thank you so much. I really think you need to come on to the Home Shopper Show I with me so. now. When, you're, when you guys are viewing one of those big, beautiful houses, we're going to do it together. Me, you know, get an inspiration and I'll be holding in this uh, uh, infinity pool somewhere. You're going to be uh, jumping into the infinity the pool. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Really it's appreciate a pleasure. It. Thank, me, you. Thank, thank you so much for having me. me. Thank you. And that's about it for tonight's show. Thank you so much for staying till the end of tonight's episode. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow, 7 p.m. right here on the Private Property Podcast. Also remember to follow us on all social media pages and make sure that you are on the pass in terms of what is happening in the property spaces. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Dumi. Have a good night.